an African American with the creative drive and the personal motivation to try it on his or her own was invisible in Silicon Valley. Meet Ernest Priestley, the Invisible Man. Ernest started with Hewlett Packard, went to Zintech, and was a 25th employee at Wise Computer U.S. He left Wise to strike out on his own. I asked Ernie, how many startups was he responsible for? His answer: uh, Over the years, probably about four or five. Some were successes, some were failures. <laughs> some took a long time to fail. <laughs> Which is the worst guy, but um, you know you learn. Gosh, you learn a lot. You learn a lot. You learn how to how to handle risk. You learn you learn a lot about marketing that you kind of learn on your feet. Um, you you learn a lot about your customers. I think you know a lot of we're talking to customers, communicating with them. Sometimes you get it right. Sometimes you get it wrong. Um, and then. Understanding how things are sold, you know, whether sold to distribution, whether sold to you know, direct retail, whether you sell direct, you know, you learn a lot about that. You learn a lot about finances. Um, of course, you know, it's it's you learn a lot about finance. You know, it's um, you know, it's the the old the old story is um, whoever got whoever got. Uh, Whoever got to the bank first got paid. That's how it was. <laughs> but uh, you, you, you think it's all about just coming up with the design, and you realize that it's a whole lot more. And um, my very first product was called Protico. And so I'm sitting in an apartment in Santa Clara, and I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm working on this thing. And I finally get it to work and it's working and everything and I now I said okay now who's gonna buy this thing a couple of customers came and they were very interested and this was also helpful to the distributor because they could see wow there's a market for this it was just helpful for me too <laughs> because I said finally I could, got a market to sell this thing to so um, I had an old Toyota Celica and uh, my car died so I had to lug this computer along with the monitor, along with um, a keyboard and everything else. Back in those days, they were pretty bulky. So I had to catch the train to San Francisco, um, get there, set everything up, start the demo. Everything looks great. They're excited and they're ready to place their order. And sure enough, that glitch that I thought I got rid of shows up. <laughs> so, um, quickly the pin goes away. No, they won't get any orders out of us. So I get home, and there's a note on the door that says three days to quit. <laughs> and I'm going, this can't be worse. I then open the door. My message machine is blinking. And it's my software developer who's telling me that he doesn't want to do the software at the price that we agreed to. That he wants to charge me more. And I just, I just hang my head down. I, I just says, this is, this is too much. This is too much. I, I've reached the end. I, I, can't, I can't do this. And so I get on the phone and call one of my friends. His name is Ron Jones. And Ron comes over and he says, Ernie, man, this is nothing. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is nothing. You can do this. And after that pep talk, I realized that I have to go through this, you know. And I says, if I can make it through this, through this one week, I can, I can survive. And um, figured out the problem, solved it, got that first order. And that was, you know, it was on, it was on like Donkey Kong from there. So it was, it was good.